after those two championships in the 2011-12 season, you guys were both involved in a trade for Chris Paul. And obviously we know mm. that got vetoed. Right. It turned everything upside down. And you guys are both here right now. I wanted to kind of get your point of view because I know you guys took different routes. Mm. You know, you stayed, you, you you traded, you got traded. So we can start with we can start with you, pal. Like, what was your point of view on that trade? Yeah, obviously it, <clears throat> it was an emotional hit, right? It was um, it was tough to to see because we had a tough loss the year before against Dallas. But we pretty much had the same core and the same team mm -hmm. that we won with, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, to you know, we I think we all came in with kind of that chip on our shoulder. Hey, let's get back to it. You know, let's 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 give it. Let's get back where we where we need to be, where we belong, right? And uh, hey, we fell short for different reasons. Obviously, Phil's absence was going to be a factor him leaving for for uh, i think for health reasons um it was it was going to be a tough tough one to overcome uh and i'm sure the franchise had that in mind as well you know even though so at the end of the day it just it tells you i mean it is this is a, a business right i mean no matter how you look at it and 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 there's people that have to make very tough decisions and players sometimes were not fully aware of that uh, but it was nevertheless an emotional kind of hit to take. Right. It's like, oh wow, I, th I thought, you know, I thought we, I was in a, uh, I'm here, right? But this you is had my no home. idea. Yeah. No, no, this is my home. This is my team. This is a, which is what you want the, your players to feel. Right. They want you want them to feel ownership. They want you want them to feel that the the identity they identify with the team that they're committing. So they give you everything they have. Yeah. But for that to happen at that time, which again, you know, thinking just from the business perspective, you have a, a chance to get one of the young talents in the league. You know, that will give you many years potentially. You know, and potentially could you know complement well with with Kobe yeah. and so forth. So boom, they pull the trigger for. You know, uh, an unheard of and historical reason the NBA is involved with the 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 Hornets. I think the Orleans Hornets at the time. Yeah. yeah. And they vetoed the trade. That's crazy. I was like, oh, so well, you're gone, pretty much. Uh, but now you're not. Yeah, it's you're, like a mental fuck. Yeah, yeah it was kind of like, you know what it's mean? like, like yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a, it's all grabbing. So it's now supposed to just come back and play. Right. Yeah. So which it was it was hard to do, but. Um, from my perspective, I, I went in and uh, I had a you know, meeting with Mitch and Mike Brown, who was the coach. Um, um, and I said, you know, all right, this is, I said to myself, you got to, hey, I love the city. I love this team. I understand why you guys might have decided to go that route. Um, would I agree with it or not? Obviously, I'm not going to get into that, but. Um, but I, I'm going to control what I can control, and I'm going to, you know, um, still be grateful and thankful to be here, and I'm going to do my best to help this team as I have had done in the past. Uh, yeah, but it was, it was, it was difficult because there's there's something that you, I mean, you can't shake that off that easily right. as much as I tried uh, in many ways, because now it's like, oh, this this can happen, yeah. and this can happen. Right yesterday mm -hmm. it's gonna happen tomorrow and then during the next two or three years that i was still on the team my name was on the block let's yeah. say a couple in every trade deadline mm -hmm. um but i do have to give credit and and thanks uh to ownership and management that they never really pulled the trigger again i guess right and that i was able to i gotta leave on my own terms uh uh after the 2014 season uh, so that's kind of that was my ex experience, um, um, and then we had to deal with other hardships throughout those years. Right. Uh, but I was still always I try to represent our Lakers jersey with with pride and, and with the utmost respect, um, and and try to do my best, you know, during that during that time as well. I wish I was as mature as Pal. <laughs> yeah, we know it kind of went a little different. Yeah, you. but you know. I just, Before I think we get to you, I just want to ask him one question. Because I know Kobe is also <coughs> the captain of that team. Did he have <coughs> a role in that? Like, did your relationship with him change? Because like, you know star players 
usually have a say right. in trade. So right. did he have a conversation with you after that? Do you remember? Uh, I mean, well, I think what I remember him saying, um, not just to me, I think what else is like, hey, management, make a decision. You know, stop, you know, going the back and forth. Want to keep them, keep them, you know. Mm-hmm. Because, and, and, but players need to have, to some degree, peace of mind. So they can be fully committed and they can give you their best. If they're like, we, we see this, right, um, you know, all, all the time, but it's part of the game and, and players do have to understand that and, and we do to a certain degree, but it's, it's different when you go through it, right? Because it does mess with you to a certain 100%. degree. 100%, right? yeah. And it t- does kind of take away f- to a certain degree. Uh, you try to let it not affect you as much as possible. Uh, and you still say, hey, I'm a great player. <laughs> I'm a very talented player uh, in, in the NBA. I'm in one of the best teams in the league, and I'm just going out there and do what I do no matter what. And then just kind of put those those thoughts and emotions uh, on the side. Uh, but it's uh, but Kobe was like, you know, just just basically it was more from the organization to me, kind of say, hey, be, be, be direct with him and, and kind of like, right. uh, because I, that's going to help him right. do what he does. Uh, to the best of his ability, right? So that was more, you know, but Kobe was, again, he always kind of, I don't know how involved or not or how much of a say I, I didn't. Uh, I don't think he tried to get involved too much with that, uh, knowing him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then he always kind of stood up, I think, for for his teammates and was there when, when he could be. Um, right. So that's... So, I mean, we, we know how you took it, and you took it kind of the yeah, opposite way. Yeah, I think I just kind of read, um, you know, the relationship wrong. I I thought, you know, because of what I've been through with the team, you know, they let me shoot the show. Um, you know, my son passed away when I was on the team, so I would think they would never <clears> – at the time, I just didn't really handle myself. Well. You I got nowhere. Yeah, I didn't – I just came off of the six minute of the year award. Right. So, I didn't think that, you know, they would – Trade me at that time. Did you guys have any conversations? No, and I didn't. I didn't really like get it back together until I kind of like came back um, with the Clippers, as far as basketball wise. You know, took me like a year and a half to kind of. Oh shit! I'm not in LA. No, I hear. I mean, I know you said you guys didn't really talk. Did you talk to Kobe at all? Or you really just shut everything out. I was like, like right. fuck it. 